Hello, everyone. Welcome to an episode of Exploring the Arts Around Us. I'm Monica Merrill, your host. In this series, we've been exploring various types of art, and I've been introducing you to some of the local residents who are creating and celebrating those art forms. In the past, we talked about dance as an art form, specifically ballet. But today, we're going to explore a different style of dance, and it's called open fusion, something a little bit different. Um, to review a little bit of history, dance has been an important part of human rituals, celebrations, and ceremonies since the beginning of early civilization, though tracing its history has been difficult. The best documentation of dance we've seen is in prehistoric drawings found on the walls of caves, and examples date as far back as 10,000 years ago. Um, modern dance methods and the type we'll be talking about, open fusion, began to emerge in the, early, in the late 19th and early 20th century. Now, it's been suggested that modern dance and contemporary was sort of a rejection of classical ballet because modern dance doesn't follow structured steps, but instead focuses on a dancer's own interpretation and movement to express their inner feelings. This came about as America became more industrialized and the work world changed. The middle class emerged, and old concepts of social structure faded. People had more disposable income and more free time, and they began to be more interested in health and physical fitness. And women especially were interested and took to gymnastics as a springboard to dance. The world was ripe for the introduction of modern interpretive and contemporary dance. And now we've evolved even further to open fusion. So let's meet my guest, Megan Greenwood, co-owner of BAM Choreography, to talk more about this art form. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good, tell us a bit about yourself, like how you began your interest in dance and what formal training you've had. Sure, so I started dancing as a kid, really early on, about five years of age, my parents put me into dance. I was very interested in, in music television, um, so MTV and the music video era was just starting out, so I Good. loved dancing to different music in front of the TV. We all can re <laughs> relate to that. And I formally trained with the late, great Joyce Ellis, who was part of Washington County. She was based out of Washington, Pennsylvania for many years. And in that uh, studio space, we learned different styles. And that's why I'm calling um, my style now Open Fusion, because Miss Joyce pulled from jazz, pulled from modern, pulled from ballet, and just made it her own. That sounds like a great explanation of, of what we've gotten to at this point. So for your, you have a company? Mm -hmm. What does BAM stand for? <laughs> <laughs> so actually, uh, my sister and I, Brianna Pato and Megan Greenwood, so B, A, and M, Good. Um, is, is what makes up BAM Choreography. Good. Uh, we started the studio almost 14 years ago now, and yeah, we're still, still going strong. <laughs> so how did you settle on Open Fusion, more contemporary dance as your style, as opposed to something more traditional? Well, growing up with having the different styles that we pulled from in our studio experience with Miss Joyce, because my sister went there as well, um, we felt more compelled to bring art and movement to people in a more uh, digestible way, so they didn't have to feel like they had to be a traditional ballerina, for example, to come dance with us. So we, we like that open space. So is open fusion difficult to learn? Because like my interpretation of what you've explained is that it is interpretive, so how specific are the actual steps? Tell, tell, talk a little bit about the dance process or the choreography. Sure, so we have a bunch of different classes that we offer, but our choreographed classes, mm -hmm. um, we range in the, the intensity and the difficulty of our steps, but our whole goal is to make movement very accessible to everybody. So even if you've never danced before, all of our classes are very beginner friendly. So you can come and learn different choreography pretty easily and our steps vary with the different music that we use, the different classes that we offer. And if somebody has been dancing for a long time, maybe we can make the choreography a little more difficult for that specific person. Mm -hmm. If you've never danced before, we try to make the choreography very um, open and easy to, to pick up on so people feel confident and they enjoy the movement. Well, and given the fact that it is sort of self-interpretive, you can't make a mistake in some respects. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So tell, tell our viewers, where do you actually hold your classes and how do you structure them? Are they like 
a one-time program or do you do a series of progressive classes? Sure, so we have a studio space in <coughs> Venetia called The Basement, uh, The Basement because it's in the basement of my home and we've converted it into a full dance studio with mirrors and it's great for small classes. We have a range of different drop-in classes available but we also do memberships that are monthly and you can come anytime you want. Um, there's no real set schedule in terms of when you have to come. We love to see you every week and there's different classes available every week. I think we have a clip of your introducing the basement studio. Yeah. So if we can come to that, uh, this will give you uh, viewers a little bit of an example of where and what goes on there. Sure, sure. <laughs> Yeah, so the studio has fully new floors, new mirrors, great for small group classes. We also have a virtual class that goes on at the same time as our live classes. That way, no matter where you're at, you can join on Zoom and join in the movement. I bet that was great during COVID. Oh yes, that, that was the reason that we did what <laughs> we did, honestly, because things changed a lot with COVID and the isolation and not being able to go out to people as much. So we brought people to us through virtual virtual settings that that even despite the tragedy of that whole experience it's come there's been a lot of positives that's right so let's talk about the types of dance classes you offer are there age or physical requirements for the classes um, you it seems like you hold them for all ages absolutely we're very intergenerational so we do youth classes mostly at the Peters Township Rec Center so that's a different space um, but we obviously like to work with children um, we do seniors so we do senior classes like sit and fit and things like that that are more open to movement where you need to sit the whole time or you're just uh, sitting on the floor and stretching. Mm -hmm. And then we also do adult classes that are, you know, anything ranging from cardio dance to choreography to strength training, cardio flexibility type classes. For your uh, sit and fit that are more targeted to seniors, do you actually go out ever to nursing homes or get invited Absolutely. to places like yeah, that? Yeah, we go to a senior care center at least once a week. And we also work uh, really closely with the Peters Township Library where we offer the sit and fit class. I saw that they had just advertised yeah, that and you yeah. mentioned also Peters Township Rec Center. Yes. So people who might be interested can also look in the new in Peters and find That's the right. classes that are being scheduled. Yes. yes. So um, talk a little bit about what motivates you as far as wanting to have help people dance. Yeah. Give me your give me your sort of mission statement. Sure, sure. Uh, so our whole goal with BAM is to bring movement to people for happiness and health, because we feel that no matter what your age, no matter what your fitness capabilities, movement is really great for not only your physical health, but also your mental health, because it gets you out of your stressed zone and into a very mindful space by just moving your body. And we're very accessible, meaning we are a no pressure, no judgment studio. We have been for 14 years, um, meaning that we want everybody to come. Um, we're not just traditional ballerinas. We don't require any sort of um, prerequisites, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what really motivates me to keep people moving. So really, you're talking about the fact that dance is a way to express yourself, but it's also very much uh, exercise, a yeah. physical fitness yeah. uh, exercise. Absolutely. And people don't often make that connection, but it really is the, one of the best workouts. It's great for your brain. Um, there's been a lot of studies showing that learning choreography can actually prevent neurodegenerative diseases because you're working your brain and your muscles at the same time. Um, so it's great for uh, aging and, and just staying active. Well, and I would think that would even be reinforced with dance because even though it's interpretive, there are certain steps and learning the steps, learning the patterns, getting into a group and being able to you know work with the group would be another way to increase your cognitive Absolutely. strength. Absolutely. They're always talking about brain exercises. Yes, so. exactly. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, related style. We, when we first met to talk about the program, we talked about hip hop mm -hmm. and you mentioned that as something that you use. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, with Miss Joyce, we were introduced to hip hop dance styles. And so we do bring that to our space still to this day. We do at least one hip hop based class and we call it a hip hop fusion because again, we're pulling from different styles of dance. Um, and we bring that to our adults and we also bring that to our cardio dance classes. So it's more of an upbeat kind of pop hip hop type feel. And it's just a, a different take on movement where you can use music 
music and move your body and and really keep your your knees nice and bent and and just kind of groove back and forth to things that you hear on the radio honestly is what we're trying to get people to do so we also now have a video of your students demonstrating this style of dance. Yeah. And it's called Bam Fam Goes Busta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we uh, have a group of volunteer adults called the Bam Fam that come in and do performance videos that you're seeing on the screen. And this one was to a Busta Rhyme song. And so we, we like to take um, different groups of people and build a whole routine, a whole choreographed routine, and get a nice project videoed, edited, uh, set to music that people recognize. Um, and just you know be entertaining with our movements as well this is where the artistic inspiration really comes out in our dance movement. so they actually are in costume yeah. so, so you you guys yes. seem to pick up like a theme or you come up with some sort yes. of a theme yeah um, I think the beginning of this was supposed to be like a masquerade party yes exactly you got that it. that seems like so much fun and you oh, do yeah. a lot of lighting effects and things like that it's a good time. We always try to pick a different theme. We try to do at least two projects per year, and we, we vary. Um, this was obviously more of a hip hop style, um, but we, we did like a soulful style last year. We're doing a little bit of a Broadway style coming up, so it's, it's just to keep things interesting. <laughs> well, it definitely is interesting, and again, it looks like it is a great exercise as yes. far as well as the dance and the beauty of the dance. Yes. So that's... that's definitely a combination that you want to continue. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about hip hop. It's thought to have started during the late 1960s mm -hmm. and 70s, um, originated by movements from African dance, but incorporating modern tap, swing. So the early history and roots of hip hop are most often associated with beginning on the East Coast with the DJ, cool DJ Herc. And he was one of the first who did the double um, record players and hit extend the instrumental parts of the songs for people to dance and show off their dance moves a little bit better. And then meanwhile you told me out on the west coast people were creating their own version of hip-hop dancing at the same time. So how did how hip-hop grew as a new style of dance and it was often performed in public. It was that you know all of a sudden break into dance in the middle of the street. <laughs> yep. So that integrates music and complex movements and now it's evolved and it's on stage, it's on screen, it's on our MTV, as you referred to earlier. So as far as that, you talked about um, dance competitions. Do you have, or the performances you show competitions per se? No, we don't have any competitions that we that we do. We have worked with studios in the past, children's studios, to help set choreography for comp competitive dance. Um, uh, we've done some hip hop choreography for certain competitions. And I know Peters Township has a wonderful oh hip hop God, dance yes. uh, competition team. So bring him back, bring him back. It's pervasive in our in our township, right? Uh, but no, we're more of a come one, come all. Everybody can join uh, our classes, our performance group. We are very open to all ages, all fit abilities you don't have to be a trained dancer we have someone now um, in high school that's joined us in our, our performance group all the way up to almost 60 years old okay. so it's a nice wide range of, of different ages but again that's an alternative or that's a choice it's not necessary that somebody has to be in that particular performance group not at all not so at you all. have classes that are um, not as demonstrative as far as we're not videotaping yes, you and sending it course. out yeah. so that's good so don't get put off by yeah. the fact that <laughs> We don't, you don't have to. You don't always have to be in front of a camera. With or us. get in costume, right? <laughs> no. So, um, one of the other things that you teach is for specific events like weddings. Yes. And yes. I think that would be a very um, fun thing to do. So, we have another video. Um, now, first of all, before we go to that, can you tell us when you do those, are they a certain style? Like, does the client or couple or whoever it is come in and say oh I want to do I want to know traditional waltz or I want to do traditional whatever tell me how tell me the kind of different things you do for weddings sure sure so we usually work with couples or maybe um, a bride and her dad or a mom and her son and they come to us with usually a playlist in mind is what we get a, a lot of the times like this particular uh, video that they're showing here this couple they came in well this is a dad and his daughter but they came in with a playlist of like 
pop music and hip hop dance music. So really crowd pleasers that you'd see on the dance floor anyway, when the DJ starts up in a wedding. Yeah, so it's a lot of surprise So movement. he just, I think they just switched they were starting yeah. with Wonderful Life, and yes. then they switched to My Girl, yeah, yeah. which is more of a rock. Like to keep the audience on their toes a little bit, right? The surprise element. They did this whole thing with us um, behind closed doors. So the, uh, like her husband-to-be didn't know about it. His wife, the mom, didn't know about oh, it. Wow. So this was all a big surprise. Um, but we've also worked with, you know, bride and groom. Uh, we don't necessarily do the traditional waltz or ballroom styles, but we like to do sort of the the explosive, oh, hey, look at us. Now we're um, partying and doing all these different hip hop dance moves. Well, I think that would be fun too, even if you started with sort of a traditional dance and then kind of got into a dance that was con concurrent with the uh, couples age and range and what they were used to dancing to when they were all dating before yeah. <laughs> they got serious. So, but, um, so your students don't actually do performances is what you say. Yeah, no. I our, mean our the students, students, the classes. Yeah, the classes are just for fun. You know, they're for fun, they're for movement, they're for health, obviously. Um, but yeah, we have a separate whole volunteer group that does the performances like twice a year, if so, if that. Um, and we're not really performing for an audience per se, we're performing for a video. Okay. Um, so we do these artistic expressions through video concepts. Do you, do you have, um, as far as the physical fitness aspect, is that part of your training at all? Or? Yeah, I'm a group certified fitness instructor through ACE. And um, that has led to BAM expanding not only from dance, but to offer more fitness type classes. So strength classes, cardio classes, flexibility, you know, whatever you, you might need. Well, they say, as you said earlier, one of the keys to longevity is movement yes. and keeping movement. And if, you know, even if you're just dancing around your living room, that's good. Mm -hmm. But that's if you right. can go out in a group such as the classes you have, get a little bit more rhythmic, get a little bit more of the physical fitness aspect factored into the dance moves, that's, that's definitely yeah. a good way to improve your health. Sure. And it builds community, right? Because right. you're with other people and mm -hmm. you just feel that energy with, with other people next to you. So that's Well, that's and that's important true because it, with that kind of energy, it, it spins off, it encourages you, it keeps you moving. Yeah. Yeah. So helps build people up. Absolutely. <laughs> um, another thing, we have another video and this one is, I think, a soul video that yeah. you had mentioned. <laughs> yes. So we have another video that we're going to show and it's Bam Fam Goes Soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this was our concept and take on um, the song called Hold On, I'm Coming by Sam and Dave. And you can look at our YouTube to, to hear these with the actual sounds. Um, but this was, you the know, blues pulling, brothers. pulling from the Blues <laughs> Brothers. Exactly. So, you know, my sister and I are the Blues Sisters, if you will. Um, and this was a, a great and a different kind of take for us. This was the first time we used a soul song and got kind of funky. Um, and we just rented out a, a place that's actually being renovated. Um, in Gill Hall right now to become oh. more of a children's community center. And this was right during the time of their demolition. And I said, oh, can we use your space <laughs> for this real fast? Because it would be great for our concept that we're going for. Sort of the old kind of 60s uh, rundown looking vibe. It's, it, it fits perfectly. Thanks. So if, if you v viewers are wondering why you don't hear any music, let's talk just for a brief oh, moment yeah. <laughs> with uh, the fact that um, music is copyrighted. Yes. And so in order to be able to show this on YouTube, we had to leave out the music. Sure. You, however, go through with your productions a whole different situation. So talk a little bit about the fact that you are allowed to copyright and you, or you have copyright, excuse yeah. me, got the rights to the copyrighted music. Yeah, so it's really uh, difficult nowadays to be a dancer and to use um, you know, copyrighted music for, for your projects. And we've ha had to go through lots of trainings uh, through YouTube to be able to use the, these songs in our videos. Um, a lot of the social media platforms now, like Instagram, TikTok, they have their own set of music that I'm assuming that they're paying licensing to the different uh, production and entertainment groups so we can overdub music in those platforms. But YouTube's a little bit different. Uh, there has been instances where we've used songs and they've said, mm, no, we can't allow you to do that because Sony Pictures doesn't allow that right now. Got it. So we, we have to be very cognizant before we even choose a song to do a, a project to. Um, but yeah, it, copywriting and, and dance is a little bit difficult to navigate, not going to lie. <laughs> no, that, that sounds like it would be very difficult. Yeah. This video is so much fun. I bet you guys oh, had a tremendous, a oh, lot yeah. of fun doing that. It was a great time. I can just hear the music in the back yeah. of my mind. <laughs>
So you have one gentleman in the video. Yeah, who's who's yeah. the fella? Uh, his name is Eddie Davis. He's been working with us for years, and he is he's one of our star students, let me put it that way, because he's always up for a challenge, up for something new, up for being the only guy usually with <laughs> us. Um, <laughs> so he, he's a great sport. Well, so there you go. It doesn't have to be just ladies. It can all, Guys can kind of join. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any of you people out there thinking like you have your inner dance person ready to come out. That's Good right. Thing. We are working one-on-one -on -one right now with a gentleman in his 20s because he wanted to learn how to dance for the first time. And I said, come on, let's, let's do this. Well, we could have a whole conversation about the fact that dancing nowadays with young people is not like it used to be. <laughs> I'm not sure that many of those students out there, those people with proms and things like that actually do slow dance. Um, people on this side or people on this side or else they just never get together like we used to. <laughs> so that would be good. So is he is he doing that so that he can maybe court a lady or something? I have no idea. He told me that initially this was because he watched his sister do recitals and competitions all of his life and was always like sort of tapping his toe in the back and didn't want to admit it to his mom, right? That he wanted to be up there too. And so we're doing a lot of hip hop dance with him and he's very much into 90s hip hop, which is oh. kind of funny. So we're going back in time and doing salt and pepper type movements <laughs> with him. And he also wants it for physical fitness. He said he just sits in front of a computer way too much. Well, you know what? That's that's probably a good aspect of it too, as we talked about the physical fitness. When you're moving, that is physical fitness, no matter whether you're dancing or, or walking or whatever, so. Yeah. And it's so much more fun than being on a treadmill. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I, and that's one of the things that I would have to agree. You know, this type of exercise is definitely a lot more fun than a treadmill or elliptical or something like that while <laughs> you're watching <laughs> while you're watching TV so now have any of your students or the people who are involved with you actually continued on in a dance career yeah we actually have a couple of folks who work with us in our performance group our BAM fam and um, at least two or three of them are professional dance teachers and some of them have become artistic directors of different theater groups in, in the area so yeah it, it really has catapulted people into thinking more along the lines of making dance and a, a career and it's also given a lot of hope to adults who thought that they had to put away any sort of interest in dance now that they are in adulthood right you think to yourself you're in a studio setting till maybe senior year of high school and then after that what do you do right mm -hmm. and that was one of the reasons that we started this group because there was nothing really out there for adults to join in so Brianna and myself we got together and we said let's create an adult class so people can feel that feeling of having just a great time on the dance floor with your friends so people who maybe have have experienced dance or been involved in dance and then time kind of slips away and they end up you know thinking oh I you know I put that aside I don't want to get to that you can get back into it Absolutely. through this through this venue through yes, this yes. method of exercise and dance 100 percent. you don't ever have to stop i one of my uh, idols is over the age of 50 and she is out there with her white hair kim McHale, <laughs> and she is on broadway and just doing it all doing the britney spears dances and the hip-hop dances i mean I, it's just so wonderful to see that you don't have to stop dancing right. just because you're right. an adult <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact it's a legitimate way for adults to have fun yeah in public so. it's okay <laughs> so what what advice do you give to someone we talk a little earlier but people who think they can't dance what do you say I say first of all give it a shot with us because we are a no pressure no judgment type type company mm -hmm. if you come and even just move your body side to side for the entire hour you are still feeling the music you're getting physical fitness you're learning beats you can work with us one-on-one -on -one if you really want some extra support but we will never judge you if you don't pick up our movements we are just there to make you have fun but also get physically fit as well well you know what it's been an interesting experience talking with you as I said I've talked to people about ballet and I did a little research about modern and contemporary and you're absolutely right this dance form is a, is an evolution of other dance forms and one of the things that I I'd, really enjoy about art is that it's constantly evolving yeah. whether it's you know painting art or singing art or dancing art there's always something new around the bend and people like you inventing something new <laughs> around the bend so yeah, yeah it's been it's been great talking to you about modern contemporary open fusion <laughs> dance and uh, seeing the videos and talking about how people can really get more fit but enjoy themselves at the same time yeah so yeah. Let's show a graphic um, with your um, contact information if somebody wants to go ahead 
and get in touch with you. As I said, you heard earlier that they do run programs through the uh, Peters Township Community Center. So if you're interested, you can look them up there. Um, please feel free to, to investigate some more. Now, in <laughs> one of the things when I was doing some research for the program and looking at modern contemporary more than open fusion, I hadn't thought about the term, um, I read about a woman, Martha Graham, who is one of the most famous dancers in the modern dance world. And she actually was born and lived here in Western Pennsylvania mm -hmm. for just a few of her early years. <laughs> and she had a quote that I think kind of works with you uh, and with what you're doing yeah. and with dance as a whole. Dance is a song of the body. Dance is the hidden language of the soul. So learning and engaging in dance of any type, modern, contemporary, hip hop, open fusion can be a great outlet for exercise and physical movement and a means of individual expression and showing your own personal artistic flair. Megan's given you some ideas <laughs> of how to do it with her group. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about this art form, this dance form, open fusion, and how BAM choreography can help you experience it. I hope you'll be inspired to try. Thank you for watching this episode of Exploring the Arts Around Us.